You are very welcome to our Sunday School broadcast for the 17th of January 2021 and our topic is Abraham's Great Test. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come again before you, Jehovah God, but not like last week, not like yesterday. We come afresh, we come anew. Believing Jehovah God that this is your will. Therefore, Lord, we ask for strength, we ask for anointing, we ask for your help and the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, Jehovah God, for everyone that is tuned in. Boy, girl, man, woman, young, old. Lord, that your Holy Spirit will help them. Lord, that you open the eyes of our understanding. Lord, that will behold wondrous things out of your word. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, take over and do your own work and bless your people. Thank you for answering us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Abraham's great test. Let us take our first reading from Genesis chapter 17 verses 15 to 17. Genesis 17, 15 to 17. We asked my daughter Evangeline to read that scripture. Then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall the child be born to a man who is one hundred years old? And shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? Praise God. If I keep reading 21, Genesis 21, verses 1 and 2. Genesis 21, 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Genesis 22, 1-2 Now it came to pass, after these things that God tested Abraham, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. The same 22 and verse 17. 22, 17 says, Blessing, I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Praise the Lord. We are looking at how God tested Abraham. But before we go into that, let us see the difference between test and temptation between trial and temptation let's read james chapter 1 james 1 2 to 5 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. 12 to 15 of the same chapter. James 1, 12 to 15. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, 
nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Okay, we need to understand this, the difference between being tried and being tempted. Number one, trial or test comes from God. Temptation comes from Satan. And the Bible talks about how we can contribute to being tempted and so on and so forth. But let us be clear. The important thing is, what do you do when you are tried? And what do you do when you are tempted? Temptation, like I said, comes from Satan because he wants you to sin against God. But, the Bible says when we are tempted, what should we do? Flee. It says flee from temptation. Because you're not superhuman. Something begins to happen. Something begins to brew inside you, around you. And then you know, hey, this is temptation. And already you're beginning to consider it. The Bible says flee, run away, don't stay there until you are defeated by the temptation, by the lust, and then you cry after. The Bible says there is one answer to temptation, get away from there. On the other hand, the Bible says that when you are tried, endure, stay there, fight on, persevere until the trial is over so in that wise as we have said we run from temptation because it is Satan but when it is trial you stay there and you overcome that is the difference now Abraham was tried by God let us know there, God is a good God. We talk about the faith of Abraham, how God asked him to go and kill his son. But God being good, and the Bible says he will not let us be tried more than we can bear. What does that mean? What it means is that when trial comes, okay, Let's look at it this way. The Bible reckons that with Abraham, number one, God said, leave your country, leave your nation, and I'm going to take you to a land, a new place that you do not know. The Bible says Abraham obeyed. Fine. Abraham had enough sense to know that God is taking me to a place that is better than where I am because that's what God does. When God asks you to leave one place to the other, he has kept something. That place must be better. It's like God saying, hey, leave Omaha. I'm taking you to Abuja. Leave Omaha. I'm taking you to America. You start packing your bags. As tempting, as hard as that might be, because you might leave all you love ones, but you know that you're going to a better place. And God might say, look, when you're going, you're never going to come back here. That will become your new country. You better get it settled. That is a trial. It's not everybody. It's okay to go to America. It's okay to go to Europe. And then... Live there, make your wealth, come back, visit your people and so on and so forth. But when, when God says you're going there forever, you will die there, you'll be buried there, you won't come home. It's a bit more challenging. But that was the simplest that Abraham could have. Now, when Abraham got to the promised land, God said, hey Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. 
And Abraham waited for 25 years. That was a bigger trial. It was. 10 years, nothing happened. 20 years, nothing happened. And then the wife, being a lovely wife, faith-filled woman, said, take my slave girl and let's have children. We have waited for this God long enough. And Abraham succumbed to that temptation. Again, that's the difference. That was temptation. And Abraham fell for it. Let me just digress and say something. In the New Testament, especially in Hebrews, God says that Abraham, I'm going to see that, that Abraham through faith, when God said, sacrifice your son, when God said, do this, when God, Abraham did it. God was looking at the final account, the balance sheet of Abraham's life, the file of Abraham in heaven. Abraham was not that perfect because even if he just walked that one time that Sarah suggested something wrong and he did it, he fell for that. So, looking at the Old Testament, Abraham fell now and again. Moses fell now and again. But when you now come to the New Testament, about Moses, God said that Moses was faithful in all his house. In other words, it doesn't matter the mistakes we make. We shouldn't make them. We should not fall into temptation. We should rise above temptation and above sin. But by the time we get to the New Testament, by the time you end your life in God, because God has forgiven you, because God has erased your sin, that record is no longer there. God says, well, the Bible says that God forgets. He forgives and he forgets our sin. That's what happened to Abraham. Despite that mistake, by the time the writer of Hebrews was looking at Abraham's file in heaven, there was no record of that mistake because God had, isn't God a good God? My brother, my sister, before you begin to judge somebody, your brother, and say, oh, I, I'm not even sure he ever repented. I want you to know that the person you might be talking about might have settled it with God and God has forgiven. And it is only you that is troubling yourself. As far as God is concerned, that person is clean and clear before God. It happened to me once. A man of God really, 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 really did something terribly wrong. I was very angry and I was planning how I would see him and give me peace of my mind. And God said to me, shut up. He is my servant, not yours. You didn't call him. I called him. Wow, this person, servant of God, he taught me a big lesson that day. My brother, my sister, God is a merciful God. We should join God on the side of mercy, on the side of forgiveness, on the side of forbearance. And we should not be counting the errors of our brethren against them. God would have forgiven them. Why don't we do the same? So God took Abraham from a little temptation, so to speak, to a bigger one. And finally, he came to where God says, when they had waited for so long. And the Bible says both Abraham and Sarah were old. God now brought it to pass that Isaac was born. Can you imagine the joy? And then the bigger temptation was, the bigger trial was coming. God said, Abraham, go and kill this son. That you have waited for. Your only son. And God rubbed it in. God said, Isaac, your only son, the son that you loved, the son that you waited for how many years? And look, he is the one that is going to bear your name. Your name, your country, the country is going to be called after him. He will, and God said, go and kill him. And Abraham obeyed. He didn't just obey halfway. He took this boy traveled for three days, went up to the mountain, tied him up and was about to kill him. Wow! And God said, Abraham, yes, now you are ever righteous before me. Hallelujah! Because he obeyed. Continuing, what we're going to see is why was Abraham, why did Abraham obey so much? 
what gave him the strength to obey we talk about Abraham's faith he's the father of the faith how come that is what we're going to look at and see how we can appropriate that to ourselves so that we'll be able to overcome like Abraham did let us look at Galatians chapter 2 and in verse 20 Galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me I hope that came out loud enough Romans 6 Romans chapter 6 verses 6 to 8 Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Okay, that is the secret of Abraham's success. The Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, you and I who have received Jesus died with him. The Christian walk and what makes us usable by God is because we are dead. We are dead to sin. The flesh is dead. The God, the Spirit of God is now alive and leading us that is the secret of Abraham when you give your heart to Jesus it's not just saying God here am I when you say God here am I be my Lord you are saying from now on everything you ever say is yes no longer no no arguments if a child of God has not died if a child of God has not submitted to God unto death there is no way you can do what Abraham did. Abraham had a mind like you and I. He said, God, when you promised that through Isaac, I will be father of many nations. Now you are saying I should kill the same person. God, I think you need to rethink. In fact, no, that is not even God because God cannot contradict himself. The blessings of God make it rich. And he asked no sorry. You quote all kinds of scriptures. Abraham was able. He knew all that. But Abraham because he was dead to himself. He was dead unto submission. Paul says. Yes I am dead. I died with Christ. The Paul you see now. I am living by the grace of God. It is Christ that lives in me. It is no longer Paul. In fact, it is no longer Saul. When his name was changed, that was when he submitted and died. Abraham's name was changed from Abraham to Abraham, showing that the Abraham that we knew had died. Sarah's name was changed from Sarah to Sarah, showing that Sarah, even Sarah had died. Child of God, let me ask you a question. Are you alive or dead? Let me ask you a question. Are you that same person who was easily angered even before you got born again and 10 years after you're still very angry, very touchy, very irritable, small thing you spark off and people say, oh, if Christianity is like this one, I am not part of it. I've shared this before. A young lady came out to testify. And one of the things she said was, oh, before now, before I got born again, I used to fornicate. I used to be a fornicator, lie with me. But now things have changed. And the mom was sitting in the congregation with my wife. And she was saying, oh, has she stopped fornicating? Has, she, has anything changed? Excuse me, that's bad. We need to die a dead person obeys everything that you say a dead person doesn't resist you want to turn the hand that way it just obeys you that's it you want to twist the neck the neck goes 
You say, look, you punch the dead, it doesn't punch you back. You spit on it, it doesn't do anything. Why? Because it's dead. Christians, a lot of Christians need to die if you have not died. Paul says, even after I died at salvation, I still die daily. What does that mean? Every morning I submit to the will of God. Every morning I say, God, whether it's easy or it's difficult, please let your will be done. Let your will be done in my life. It is because Abraham has submitted to the will of God that he was able to gather faith to do these things. A man of God says that God doesn't use somebody who is alive. God only dwells in dead vessels because God knows that he can use them. God dwells in dead men and women. Those that have died with Christ, not just by what they say, but by the way they think and by the way they behave. God says, hey, take this money, all the money you have, go and give it to that person. Yes, sir. Because he knows that the money belongs to God anyway. Are you a man of God? Don't take advantage of people because they are ready to obey God and obey you. That is wrong. And ask them something to do just to benefit your own ego. No, that is wrong. But because Abraham died, he was able to submit 100% to God. Because Jesus died, he was able to do the will of God. He said, Father, if though we agreed, but this thing is more difficult than I thought. However, let us do and follow our first agreement. Let us also look at Matthew chapter 11, Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does that mean? Take my yoke. Yoke is, is a rope. A rope that has been... Take, take my yoke. There is a loop. And then one side is tied to Jesus. And the other side is loose. And Jesus said, take it and tie yourself and follow me. That's what it means. So wherever he goes, you go. Whatever he says do, whatever he says do, you do. Why? Because his yoke is tied around you. You cannot run away because you have volunteered not to run away. You cannot go beyond what he allows you. You go around the cycle around Jesus. If the rope is only 10 feet, you can only go 10 feet north, 10 feet south, 10 feet east and west just around that place and when that is happening you have all the protection you need you have all the faith you need you have all the supplies you need why because you are tied to the lord that is what it means jesus says hey i'm not going to pick it up for you you volunteer and take it and jesus was speaking to people who have become christians they had repented at his word they had repented they've been born again but he says take my yoke so when you repent that's good you need to sit yourself down count the cost and decide to follow this jesus jesus says when you do that then you learn of me then you humble yourself you learn of me and as i teach you your faith grows and you grow in submission praise the lord mm -hmm. finally let's read lamentation chapter 3 and in verse 27 lamentations 3 27 it is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth that is straightforward a lot of people are saying well i will follow god when i'm 30. how do you know you get to 30 my brother how do you know a lot of people are saying oh these people are preaching like this because they are 60 years old 60 something years old they don't enjoy life anymore that is not true that is not true when i repented I was 23 and my one regret was that I didn't repent much earlier. When I saw what was in the Lord, when I saw what God had to offer, the peace he offered me, 
the faith he offered me took away the kind of petipeting fear. Oh yes, I was fearful when I was young. Oh, people will kill you. They put all kinds of faith inside your head. And the thing is coming back full time, not in, to the unbelievers, but in the church. Oh, anything happens, you bind. It doesn't end in binding. God kill them. Anything happens. Look, starting to say it. I love Yoruba people. I grew, I well, I did my uni there. I love them. I have friends among them. But a lot of their unbelieving customs and way of life has come into the church and gone to the east. And the typical traditional Yoruba man will come out from his house in the morning with his right foot first. If he makes the mistake and he comes out with the first, he makes incantation, goes back and we do it. All kinds of superstitions believe nobody can kill you as a child of God. Stop worrying about that. What will you need? What I need is to take the yoke of God, submit to God, grow in the faith of the Lord Jesus. And who is that person? Who is that demon that will kill you when you're following God? The Bible says our lives are hid with Christ in God. We were dead. So now our lives are hid with Christ in God. Who can go that far to come and pull you out? Praise the Lord. Abraham was tested and he passed the test. And God didn't just tempt him in one day. Abraham, I am God. Go and kill your son. No. We said that God started gradually. And that is how he will take us. Because when we are tried, our faith grows. Our patience grows. Our endurance grows. Our knowledge grows. Our love grows. We become like Jesus himself. That is the purpose of the trial. When gold is put in, in fire or in a furnace, it is not to destroy that gold, it's to make it purer and silver as well. And if you are never tempted, if you never tried, you never grow. You never grow as a child of God. God will have to try you and test you before He can trust you with certain assignments. If you don't, if you run away from trial, God will never use you in certain capacity. He can use you in small, small uh, matters. But not in anything serious. He won't send you. He will send somebody else. But when it is temptation, run. That is what we have said. And we said the only people that can stand like Abraham did are those who have died with Christ. Those who are ready to submit. Those who are ready to pay anything for their faith. If in their lives we grow to that point where we are ready to die for Jesus, we start small until he takes us there praise the lord the question is have you even started the journey have you given your heart to jesus and then you go into total submission and then you can be tested with big things if you have not written your name if your name is not written in the book of life please please do it now let us pray father in the name of jesus I come to you now. I am a sinner. Forgive all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel it from the book of death. Come into my heart, dear Lord Jesus. Give me your Holy Spirit and lead me to the end. Help me to submit totally to you every day, every minute, so that when I am tested, I will stand. And grow enough to do all that you want me to do. And finally come to rest with you in heaven. Thank you for answering. Because I prayed in Jesus name. If you have prayed that prayer. You are born again. It's as simple as that. And as you learn and grow in God. Things will begin to change for you. Father everybody that has heard this word. Do they have sickness in their bodies? Lord I pray that you heal them. In the name of Jesus, that all of us will grow in the fear and knowledge of you. And Lord, meet with you in heaven when the time comes. Thank you for answering us because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.